miss you till you dead or you gone So on that note, I'm leaving after the song So you ain't gotta feel no way about Jay So long, but at least let me tell you why I'm this way Hold on, I was conceived by Gloria Carter and that Guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know This is a new series we're going to do on my channel uh, Quarterly, four times a year where we explore different fragrance materials, the raw materials. And the reason we're doing this is I think it's important to talk about, for you guys to know, fans of fragrance, what makes up the actual fragrances that we wear. It's cool to just talk about fragrances and what they smell like and when is best to wear them and how they perform and are women gonna swarm around me if I wear this one and which one will women like more on me. That's all good. I do it as well. Um, but I, as I sort of take this journey to become an at-home perfumer, I want my channel to be a little bit more, I guess, formally educational. So I thought we could do this every three months. We can per, uh, discuss either a particular single um, material or a group of materials that make up fragrances. So we're going to look at a bunch of different things. We're going to look at musks, right? We'll look at synthetic musks, natural musks. We'll look at aldehydes. We'll look at esters. We'll look at oud, right? Like what kind of oud is really in the fragrances you're wearing? How expensive is oud? We'll look at amber and ambergris and sandalwood. Isobe super. You know, you guys hear all about these materials that make up fragrances, but how much do you actually know about them? And uh, I hope a lot of you are interested in this, but uh, if not, you know, you could skip it and watch my other videos. We'll, we'll, uh, still, we'll still do reviews and stuff like that, but there's just so many cool materials coming out and, and the aroma chemicals by, by companies like Robert Tett and IFF and Cinerome and, and, and Givadon. Um, and these m massive perfume houses create these cutting edge materials that make fragrances smell uh, photorealistic and I just think it's cool to dive in and talk about those so you can have a little bit more knowledge when you wear a fragrance hopefully you'll know a little bit about uh, a little bit more about what's making that fragrance up now the material I picked first to talk about is a pretty obscure one and I really don't hear it ever talked about on YouTube and it's called they're called pyrazines okay pyrazines so what's a pyrazine well okay First, it's a heterocyclic aromatic compound with the chemical structure C4H4N2. Now, heter uh, heterocyclic, for some of, this who, some of us who didn't fare so well in chemistry, myself included, really simple sort of definition of it, of heterocyclic. It basically means that, uh, that the, the uh, compound has at least two different elements. Now, that's what a pyrazine is. Normally, pyrazines are used to flavor food or beverage, but there's a huge palette of pyrazines available to the perfumer. Many pyrazines occur naturally in food, so they're in green pepper and peas. Now, if you've ever, um, one of my favorite types of wine is Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it's a, it's to me sort of a dry green um, white wine, and I feel like good Sauvignon Blanc, um, or at least ones that I enjoy, I should say, have a note of green pepper to them. I don't mean um, like green peppercorn. I mean like actual green bell pepper. Um, and my favorite uh, Sauvignon Blanc called Cloudy Bay, which I think is the best. I, they're sure, sure, there's some French ones. I believe uh, Cloudy Bay is Australian. Um, or it could be from New Zealand, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but, uh, but that one has a strong green pepper, uh, green bell pepper note to it, and that's a pyrazine in the wine that's giving the wine that, uh, that note. So they're in green pepper and peas, but they also are used to enhance the flavor of roast coffee, and believe it or not, smoked meat. Pyrazines are also used to enhance the flavor of smoked meat meat. Now in fragrance, they're used almost exclusively and heavily in gourmand fragrances. So two that I know 100% uh, for a fact, uh, heavily used pyrazines are uh, Jeu de Peau by Serge Luton, uh, Skin Games, which sort of has this uh, milky 
popcorn caramel vibe to it and salted caramel by Chamblu, which a lot of people think smells like uh, caramel popcorn. Uh, and many fragrance that ha any fragrance that has a salty gourmand aspect to it is almost definitely using some sort of pyrazine. Now, I first came across pyrazines um, trying to solve a problem. A lot of fragrance making to me is trying to solve problems. You know you want something to smell like X. So the problem is how do you get that? What can you use to make your fragrance smell like X? And you sort of, that's, that's solving the problem. And so I decided for one of my fragrances, I need to make a Cracker Jack Accord. Now, for those of you who don't know what Cracker Jack is, it's a really old school snack um, in the United States that's usually sold at the circus or sporting events. And what it is, I don't really like the taste of it, but I do enjoy the smell, um, is it's peanuts and popcorn covered in caramel, and the caramel's dry dried so they're really crispy so what i did to sort of get to this cracker jack accord is first i whipped up a caramel accord um jean claude elena in one of his books talks about how you can create a simple caramel accord with with just tonka bean uh tonka bean absolute uh vanilla absolute or vanillin and methyl cyclopentylone so those three materials, you can create a pretty good caramel note. So first I did that, and then I added some pyrazines, and I'm still trying to get the ratios right. And I have a couple different pyrazines, which you can see uh, in front of you. So the first one I use is right here, and this one is called acetylpyrazine. And acetylpyrazine to me, guys, smells exactly, exactly like corn chips, uh, taco chips, and popcorn and it's super cheap. I got my 4ml of this for $2. Now, 4ml doesn't seem like much, right? But this has to be diluted down to one-tenth of a percent to be palatable. So in 10ml of alcohol, you're going to use a tenth of an ml. Now, this is already dropped down to 5%, so you're gonna lose, you know, use a little bit more, but this just can show you already how little acetylpyrazine um, that I've used. And then even in your final composition, it's recommended to not overpower that you don't use more than a fifth of a percent uh, of acetylpyrazine. So that's 0 0.05 in your final composition. 4ml should last you forever unless your scent hits big or my scent hits big and I'm mass marketing it. Please God. The other pyrazines I'm using are these two uh, right here. Now this one is called trimethyl pyrazine you can see that's a down to 10 percent they sell it down to 10 percent already this one sort of has a nutty uh chocolatey aroma and with the acetyl it works really nice to give you a nutty uh a nutty popcorn like uh characteristic mixed with the caramel that does kind of give off uh, a little bit of a Cracker Jack, uh, a Cracker Jack vibe. So I'm still kind of working through the ratios on that one. Now I also grabbed this. These are both from Perfumer's Apprentice, by the way. This is from Creating Perfume, and this one is called Dimethyl Pyrazine, and this is 2 ml straight, so it's not diluted down. Now I bought this one because this one is supposed to have a hazelnut aroma, and I have plans for a hazelnut fragrance. But to me, it has a weird fish-like aroma. That could be because I haven't used this one enough yet. And then I also purchased this, and this one is called tetramethylpyrazine. That's also diluted down uh, to 10% in alcohol. Um, and that one was supposed to smell like peanut and coffee, but I smell nothing from this one. So I might just be anosmic to it. I'm not sure yet so far, mm, not much. And pyrazines are super strong, so I'm confused as to why I'm not smelling anything, but that's neither here nor there. So, I don't know, I thought this would be a cool first little lesson, right, on, on pyrazines. You know, I don't have much else to say about them. I just think they're cool. Um, there's many other different types of pyrazines, nutty pyrazines, uh, cocoa pyrazine. Not the easiest things to get in the U.S. Hermitage Oils, which is a fragrance site in Europe that a lot of uh, of at-home perfumers use has has more available that I haven't been able to get yet but I just think they're really neat uh, and it's something we don't talk about at all in Freycom. You never hear the term pyrazine and yet they're in some of our favorite uh, fragrances so just super cool um, and that's going to be the first episode of, uh, of this series. I think next month, next quarter, sorry not next month, if you guys love this maybe we can do it monthly. 
But next quarter, this is going to be a little bit harder in this video went to 10 minutes, but I'd like to try to tackle aldehydes. Uh, you guys probably know of aldehydes, made a lot of Chanel older uh, fragrances and Blandvin fragrances, very popular. Uh, they're usually, they can either be very airy um, and effervescent and give this sort of fresh oxygen feeling, or they can be like bubbly uh, and give the feeling of like fizziness. Um, so we're going to talk about aldehydes and the difference between aldehydes and fruity esters. Because when I first got into this, I bought a bunch of aldehydes, a bunch of materials labeled as aldehydes from perfumers or friends apprentice aldehyde c16 c18 c14 and they were labeled peach aldehyde um, coconut aldehyde strawberry aldehyde and it turns out those aren't real aldehydes those are fruity esters which are different than actual aldehydes so next quarter i guess it'll be november we'll deep dive into aldehydes and if there's a material you want to know more about please let me know and i'll put it down on the list but I hope you enjoy this series I hope if there's two or three people that get something out of this and are inspired to learn more then I feel like I'm doing my job and uh, better than uh, reviewing another fucking you know another fucking nautical voyage blanker or why I sell on blanker as far as I'm concerned so guys I'll see you later this week with a review you already know what it is my name is Maximilian I must know guys thank you what happens when you become the main source of a pain daddy look what I made dad's gotta go catch a plane daddy where's mommy I can't find mommy where is she I don't know go play